Don't listen to the false gospel that's negative. Don't listen to the lies. Friend, get alone by yourself with the Lord in his word and read the Bible for yourself. Understand the truth for yourself. Don't listen to what man is saying. Don't listen to what others are saying. Go and search the scriptures for yourself. Go and find out if these things be true. Jesus said, if you follow him, he said, you shall know of the doctrine. You shall know if the doctrine's from the Lord. There's a lot of heresy today. There's a lot of falseness today. A lot of lies today. And all it does is make us want to say, depart from me, O Lord. Get away from me. But when you understand the truth and you understand that it is only as the Lord comes near to us that he can save us, you understand it's either me or it's him. Am I going to try to seek to save my life as he draws near, as this flesh begins to die, as I hear the flesh screaming out because it doesn't want to die? Or am I going to be one of those in this hour that will hear the flesh screaming out it's going to die and crying out, Jesus, keep coming closer. Kill this thing, Lord. Kill this fallen nature. Make me free, Lord. Make me to live, Lord. Friends, Jesus Christ is an enemy of our flesh. He hates our flesh. He hates that carnal nature. And we need to hate that flesh too. We need to despise, hate, and kill that flesh. We need to mortify the deeds of our body. We need to be like Jesus. He was tempted in all points, yet without sin. Amen? Yet without sin. He was tempted in every single point. Every area you and I are tempted in, Jesus Christ was tempted in. You can't ever look at the Lord and say, well, Jesus, you don't understand. He does understand. He was touched by the very feeling of our infirmities. Friends, he was bruised for our iniquities. He, the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. The Lord was bruised for our iniquities. Don't ever say that Jesus Christ doesn't understand. Don't ever say that Jesus doesn't know what it is to be tempted. Don't ever say Jesus doesn't know what it is to deal with that filthy devil. Don't ever say that Jesus doesn't care. He does care. He not only cares, he came to do something, not just talk. Amen. Jesus didn't just come to this world just to talk. He could have. He could have just talked and done and done uh, and saved the world through just his word if they would receive his word. But he knew, he knew they would not receive his word. He was crucified. His blood is the only way that you and I can be saved. Our sins must be washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. Why the blood? Because the life is in the blood. And that blood. That blood that was in Jesus Christ, that blood did not come from Joseph. It wasn't blood of a, of a natural order. It was blood that came down from heaven. Hallelujah. A life that was in Jesus Christ, in his veins, was eternal life. It was divine life. It washes, it cleanses, it heals, it makes whole. It's the blood of God. It's the life of God. It's the DNA of God. And friend, you must be born again. You must be born of that DNA, that heavenly origin, that heavenly life. What can wash away my sin? Nothing, nothing but the blood of Jesus. He didn't come just to wash our sins away. He came to make us live. He came to make us alive. He came, brothers and sisters, so that you and I might live forever. Now get your mind around that for a moment. Have you ever stopped to think that there'll never be a time when you don't exist in the presence of God in the sense that you are just not going to disappear? The world doesn't believe there's anything after this life. But I know that after this life is ever and forever and forever. Time without end. No end. 
eternal life. And yet so many times we settle for the pottage of this world. We sell our birthright for the, just for the pottage of for the just for the lentils just for the the, the 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 meager things of this world and when i say meager i'm talking about the most expensive homes i'm talking about mansions i'm talking about the most expensive luxurious you're talking the most valuable things on this earth is meager it is it is pulse it is it is lentils it is Pottage, brothers and sisters, when you compare it with the glory that Jesus Christ wants to put within the believer. Friend, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man. What God has prepared for those who love him, but God has revealed it unto us by his spirit. Paul said, Paul went through life after Jesus, after he accepted Jesus. He went through life saying, absent from the body, present with the Lord. These light afflictions. Paul, you've been beaten with rods. You've been shipwrecked. These light afflictions are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless His holy name, friends. This is the difference between eternal and temporal. This is the difference between light and darkness. This is the difference between flesh and spirit. This is the difference between God and going into hell to spend eternity with Satan. Brothers and sisters, how can you sell your birthright for a bowl of pottage for a mansion in this world, for a uh, status in this world, for a, a job or a position or a nice fancy car or a yacht or anything in this world? And I'm talking, these are the meager things. I'd much rather have little in this world and be great in faith because I understand the truth. Jesus Christ said, don't store up your treasures on this earth. He said, store up your treasures in heaven. Amen. In closing, Jesus Christ said these words and we need to take this to our hearts. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's your treasure, friend? What's the greatest treasure in your life? It should be Jesus. The truth should be Jesus. That should be your greatest treasure. And that will be where your heart is. If your heart is anywhere else, your greatest treasure is not Jesus. We must have eyes for him. We must have a singleness of heart. We must have a singleness of eye. Amen? If thy eye be single, thy whole body is full of light. But if thine eye be evil. You ever wonder what that one eye is that's on the pyramid and that everybody's doing today and all that? That's the evil eye. They're full of darkness. That, that evil eye is greed. That evil eye is envy. They're never satisfied. They never have enough. They're always looking at their neighbor. They're never happy. They're never pleased. They're never satisfied. They always got to have more. David Rockefeller was asked, if you could have one more thing before you die, what would you want? He said, one more dollar. One more dollar. Brothers and sisters, that's the evil eye. Never satisfied. I thank God for a single eye upon Jesus to be full of light. And I believe that you can have a mixture. I believe you can have where God is uh, bringing us into this place of purification. 
so that we're only eyes for Jesus. Because if you have an eye upon Jesus and an eye upon the world, you're going to have a mixture. You're going to have light and darkness. And friend, that is the making of a storm. You don't want both. They can't reside in the same place. What does light have to do with darkness? You can't have both. Eventually, it'll tear you apart. Eventually, it'll become a storm inside of you, tearing, ripping apart in your very intellect, in your mind, in your soul, and you will not be able to withstand you got to make your choice. Is it going to be the light, Jesus Christ, or is it going to be what's called the light, which is really darkness? It's the devil. He's going to try, desperately try, to come into your life as the light, but he's not the light. He comes as an angel of light, but he's not the light. Friend, understand, he is the devil. He's a liar. He comes to steal kill and destroy always remember if it's the true light it will lead you to pray and study the word of God it'll bring you to a place where you'll want to study the Bible if you're following the false light you won't have any desire to get into the Bible you'll have no desire to pray remember that if you don't have a drawing to get into the Word of God every day of your life, you're in the wrong light. When we wake up in the morning, we should be hearing God's voice. We should be drawn by the Holy Spirit. And grace should be operating in our hearts. And even when we don't feel like praying, we pray. When we don't feel like studying God's Word, we study. Friends, I want you to understand, Brother Joseph did not have any feeling whatsoever to do this broadcast. But God put it in my heart to do this broadcast. And God's grace is operating right now. This is not me. This is not my strength. This is not my wisdom. If I had it my way, I wouldn't even have done a broadcast today. If I was going by my feelings. But how many know the Lord is speaking? How many know when we're obedient to the Lord, when we obey the Lord, the Holy Ghost, the grace of God overshadows our weakness. And when we're weak, then we're strong. Amen. Paul said, I labored more abundant than you all. Nevertheless, not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Do you love his appearing? Are you looking forward to Jesus coming closer to you? Even as you're being convicted of sin, as he comes closer, those things that you overlook, he doesn't overlook. You're, everything's exposed in the light. The more closer he comes, the more you're going to be completely exposed. And you have to confess those things. You'll have to come clean. You'll have to get rid of some things. You'll have to cut off some things, friend. It's not you and I that do the cutting. It's us that we do the confessing. We do the surrendering. He does the cutting. He does the pruning. Hallelujah. Through his word. It's the word of God that cuts off those things. But we've got to be willing. Last but not least, the scripture says this is condemnation. That light has come into the world, but men love darkness. They will not come to the light that their deeds may be reproved. As the Lord appears, as the Lord comes closer to us, we must embrace and come into that light. Because if we don't, we will be condemned with the world. We will be condemned with the ungodly. And we will be rejected. So as the Lord comes near us, that's His grace. That's His mercy. The grace of God hath appeared to all men, teaching us, denying worldly lust and ungodliness, that we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. The grace of God hath appeared. And the scripture here says, Paul says, there's a crown laid up 
for all those who love his appearing. 